Okay, finally, we're going to talk about the B1, the R Finder B1 Bravo 1, a full Android device with a built-in two-way radio uh, for dual band, both DMR and analog, coming up today. <laughs> Shut up and sit down. Hey folks, I wanted to take this opportunity to invite everyone to the Irving Ham Fest on March 7th from 8 to 2 p.m. located in Irving, Texas, which is a good halfway point between Dallas and Fort Worth, uh, just east of the Mid-Cities area where, uh, where I'm located. Um, they're going to have uh, several vendor tables there, and the coolest part, I think, is the fact that they will have, for their grand prize, an IC7300. So you'll be able to sign up for the grand prize and, and uh, major hourly drawings, including an Alenco, uh dual band DMR HT, uh, the DX Mini, FT, uh, Yezu FT3D, and uh, the IC7300 will be drawn around uh, 1 o'clock in the afternoon that day. So if you have time, I highly suggest checking out this ham fest. I've attended it several times in the past. It's a great meeting place for local hams in the DFW area. And uh, it's a great place to maybe sell some stuff that you've been hanging on to for too long. 73, I hope you can make it. Hey guys, welcome to Ham Radio 2.0. My name's Jason, I'm KC5HWB. If this is a new series for you, or if you've not watched any of my previous episodes, um, and you find value in reviews and how-tos of everything that's new in amateur radio, consider subscribing below and smashing that like button for me. So today, I have, I have alluded to this device several times in several previous videos. <laughs> and today, we're going to actually get to look at it. Um, in fact, I'll probably be doing several videos on how to do this, how to do that. This is going to be an overview. I'm just going to do an overview real quick. Uh, we're going to try to key up a repeater here in just a minute and um, do some stuff like that. But um, if we look over here... And let me turn that down touch. All right, so had to get the glare. <laughs> There's a glare on that light there, so I'll turn that light off. We got these two lights here. We're just fine. I'm going to adjust this to a touch. That's fine right there. Okay, so dual band. So this is the first. Uh, if, you, if you watch previous reviews on this channel, you'll see a review of the H1, the M1, and the K1. Uh, the screen's going off. I'll turn it back on in a second. So... Those are, those were all single band, um, mostly UHF, although you could get them in VHF, um, full Android devices with a built-in two-way radio that would do UHF, DMR, and analog. This is the first dual band model. I've actually had this for a couple of months now, and it's gone through several renditions of the uh, ROM being updated, the custom ROM being updated, and the actual app in the um, um, Play Store being updated. So keeps... Uh, let me just unlock it here so that, um, but I wanted to get, uh, I wanted to get one where I could actually show everybody what's done. This is the R finder app, of course, which you've seen this before. Um, that's a, that's a repeater up near my hunting lease that I was talking on last weekend. So far, everything's really solid about this thing. Um, the, Dual band DMR, and I've never used it on VHF DMR because there's just not, there's hardly a need to use it on DHF VMR. We don't have any VHF DMR repeaters in my area. There's a couple down south of me in Texas. Um, some of the hotspots will do dual band, and that's fine. I think the DX minis do dual band. That's okay. Um, never really tried to use it that way. Maybe I'll try that in an upcoming episode and we'll see what happens there. But as of right now, I've really only ever used the, um, the radio portion of the the DMR radio portion on, on UHF. But I have talked on several VHF analog repeaters. Um, let's see if I can go here, right there. So this is N5EOC, which is a grapevine repeater. Key that up. And I power the radio on. Again, this is a full Android device. So everything, if you have a Samsung Galaxy or an HTC or a Motorola smartphone, and uh, you have all these apps on it. You can get all those apps on this device as well. Uh, it's currently running Android 8.1. Okay, that repeater's not responding. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's the right that's the right setting. Wait a minute. Oh, 
It doesn't have, oh, okay, I have to app, update the app. It doesn't have the right PL tone set for that repeater. Send parameters. So anything you don't, so, and, and, and this, is, this should not be new because if you find something that's wrong in the app, you can go here. I can go that, click on that, and actually, I can click on this, and I can go request or update info. And it, uh, let's see, PL, I'm going to put 110.9, just like that. And then I'm going to save, and it'll auto-save, it'll auto-send an email to the R Finder admins who will verify my claim and then make updates accordingly. Okay, so hopefully you heard that. I had to hold the, the radio up high because that, that repeater is on a hospital on the other side of a hill on the back side of the hospital from where I'm at, so it doesn't have the greatest coverage where I'm at inside of the shack right now. If I had an external antenna, it would work fine. But uh, let's, let's pick one that's closer here but is a uh, UHF machine right there. There we go. So that's an analog machine, obviously, because it had a courtesy tone, it had a squelch tail, you could hear the static in the background, and all that kind of good stuff. And it says analog signal under last heard right there. It says analog signal. Last heard is analog signal. Uh, receive transmit frequency. Uh, that's my radio ID, which, of course, is not used because we're in FM wideband right now. PL tone transmit and receive. And you can set the squelch, and you can save it to a memory you can do all kinds of stuff with that i can save my memories um, i can save certain channels to memories load them to the r finder cloud if i lose this device or get an upgraded device later on in the future then i can load my cloud memories into back into my other device or if for some reason i have two devices i can save memories to the cloud and make sure that they synchronize in between the devices so that is um one feature there. I demonstrate how to use this app in one of my previous videos for the R Finder device. But if we go over here, I'm going to show. Well, wait a minute. Let's go down there. Here. That right there. System. About phone. B1. Uh, let's see. I'm going to try to lessen that a little bit. There we go. We can see the screen. Android version is 8.1.0. I spoke to Bob about upgrading to 9. He goes, no, we're not going to upgrade to 9. We're probably going to go straight to 10. So uh, the device is uh, upgradable to a later version of Android. So you can do it that way. We're currently on ROM version 7.4. There are two or three newer versions of beta ROMs out there right now, which sometimes Bob will put the beta version of a ROM on the Facebook group and say, hey, go load this if you want to, test it for me, let me know what you think. Um, of course, he's got his beta testers testing it all the time anyway, but he lets people who want to help out, because there's a lot of people always asking to help out. Um, so he lets people who want to load it, um, load it, test it, provide feedback on it. And then once that ROM is approved, it'll get loaded into the App Store, which of course is just the regular old Google App Store like you'll see here. there and then we can search for our finder and that of course it comes on the phone i mean the app comes on the phone when you get the phone new the app comes with it but if you ever want to get an update or anything you it, it the the play google play store will come down and it'll say hey here's your available updates in fact let me just check for updates right now um i can see that nope my apps updates okay so checking for updates there's that so i've got facebook messenger instagram zedge wolf i don't know what that is contacts uber eats google photos twitter dropbox microsoft onedrive i've got my onedrive synchronized uh google amazon shopping ring for my doorbell google voice PayPal Mobile, eBay, those are all the updates I need right now. 
So when there's an updated ROM for the RFinder app in Play Store, it'll show up here and you just click on update. You can set it to auto update if you want to. I just don't have these set to auto update. So everything you can do with your, here's my email. That's my Gmail right there. Just like that. Um, there's a camera. I will say the one thing I don't like about this device, the camera, the camera app, I've tried three or four camera apps, and I don't think it's the app. I think it's the actual hardware in there. I just, I don't like it. I don't think it takes very good pictures at all. They're just kind of soft, like they're out of focus, and they're not, um, not really sharp. And sometimes they'll come out with a weird blue color. They're not, uh, the color on them is just not very good. And again, I've tried several apps. I don't really like the camera feature. So if you're wanting to have a phone that you use in a, well, first of all, this, there's no way this thing would fit in a gimbal. So if you have a gimbal to hold around and record video on your phone, this is not the phone you want, okay? Um, but other than that, other uh, honestly, other than the camera, I can't really, I don't really have any complaints about it. Um, the battery life when I first got it was um, pretty poor, but I think uh, th through some ROM updates, they have improved uh, battery management of the apps and the OS itself. And now when I was going to bed last night, I put it on the charger and um, it was like at 85% and I'd had it on all day. That's usually not the case. That was kind of unusual. Usually it'll be down. I, I have it on all day. And I use my phone a lot. Um, and this is my daily carry. This has been my daily carry for about a month now. About a month I started carrying this. Wanted to get a feel for it. Wanted to get, um, provide some real, real world usage information. And um, it's on, right now it's on at and I did have it on Verizon for a while. Um, when I had a, my previous company I worked for had Verizon. So I just took the SIM card out of their phone and put it into this one. And I used it for a couple weeks that way. And then I got my own at and SIM for it. Um, didn't have a problem, haven't had a problem with call coverage in either one of those places. Of course, I do live in a metropolitan area, so that does help. Um, the... The only other drawback to it, I would say at this point in time, is that the only way to charge the phone is that it, it comes with a desk charger, but that's the only way to charge the phone. You can't charge it with a micro USB or a USB-C cable. It does not have a car charger right now. They are working on developing a car charger. It has, let me switch back over here. It does have, let me increase that, turn that up a little bit since we're not looking at the screen anymore. It does have these buttons on the so so it has this this connector for future expansion. Um, this is an up down volume button which you can control the um, media volume or the ring or the ring volume whatever. Um, this is a USB C connection here, right there, and I was hoping that it would charge via USB C connection. I was like, oh USB C, I'll just plug it into my car charger. It doesn't work. It doesn't charge the phone. Um, but they're working on a car charger. I don't know if it'll connect here or if it'll be some kind of cradle, something, something. On the other side, it does still have the dual PTT buttons. This is the PTT for the actual radio. That's the power on button. This is PTT. I don't currently have it assigned to anything, but you can go into the app and assign it um, to something. Like if you use Zello, you can, you, you can assign it to a Zello app if you want to. This is a fingerprint reader right here, which I've never been able to get to work. Um, I don't think it's actually incorporated into the custom ROM, but that's something that we can ask for in a later expansion. There's a volume knob on the top, or it's a channel changing knob on the top right here, which sometimes controls the volume, but they're trying to get it to where, let's see, they've made a change to that several times. Sometimes the radio volume would be controlled by these buttons on the side, and other times it's controlled by that, depending on which version of the ROM you're looking at. Right now we're looking at, there's volume there. You can see the volume changing when I'm turning the, the knob on the top. I, I believe he's working on an update where you can go in and click on squelch or volume and select which one to choose to uh, that you want to change and then use this knob to change either one or, or even channels and use this knob to change either one because it does have a channel one through one through 15 on the top. So it's got 16 channels. It's got a little dot, one dot, three dot, five dot, seven. So 15 is the last number and then a dot. So it's got a 16 channel knob on the top right there. You can see it right there. And uh, so they're working on updating that to make it multifunction to where you can change memory channels, 
you can change volume or you can change squelch with it. So that will probably be upcoming in a later update. So, but they do, um, let me check the battery here. Oh, something else. I keep thinking of stuff. So the battery's got the belt clip on it. If you want to get a second battery, that'd be cool, but you have to get a second belt clip. Pretty sure they kind of, I'm pretty sure they come with belt clips. This one came with a belt clip on it. It does have dual SIM cards. So if you do a lot of traveling overseas or outside of the USA and you have a second um, account, mobile phone account somewhere, you can put dual SIM cards in it. They are, I think they're called micro SIMs. If I could get this flap up, yeah. That's the size of the SIM right there. It's not the itty bitty tiny uh, nano SIM. It's the one next one up, and I believe that's called a micro SIM. It'll also take two micro SD cards for memory expansion. And the battery itself is a... Vo is a um, I lost it there in the light. Uh, 2,600 milliamp hour battery. The battery itself is a 2,500 milliamp hour battery. So, again, it lasts... It lasts all day for sure. Sometimes if I really, really use it a lot during the day, it'll be down to like 15 or 20%. When I travel to my Deer Lease, and this, this was true on my Galaxy uh, S9 as well. When I tr travel to my Deer Lease, the, the, uh, it's out in the sticks, out away from the metropolitan area, and the, um, the signal out there is harder to reach, so it's almost like the phone starves for a signal, and it runs the battery down faster. So it, that's true on this. It was also true on my Galaxy S9. By the time I'd go to bed, if I go on a hunting trip, I go to bed at night, Galaxy S9 would be down to like 10%. Where at home, at the end of the day, it'd be at like 40%. So same story with this thing. But the battery does last all day. The antenna that comes on top of it is an SMA female on the antenna itself with a male connector. So it's the Baofeng style connector that you could say as opposed to like the FT3D or, or a D74, or even some of the new Waxons have the male connector on the antenna and the female on the body. So one of the coolest expansions they're going to have, and this is all going to be firmware updates, okay? There's, there won't be anywhere any need for hardware changes, but they're working on an internal hotspot. So basically what you'll, have, what you'll be able to do is go into the phone, go into a different app on the phone, Activate the hotspot. Tell it you want to connect to the TGIF server or Brandmeister 3102, 30, 3103, whatever. I've asked Bob if they're going to allow you to add custom servers also, and he says yes. So we'll be able to add a custom server like my HB Link server on my own Seabridge. Tell the, tell the device to connect to that, and then you're connected to the hotspot, and you use the internal radio to talk. So I, I tell everybody that the, then the radio talks to itself, and you're on the network. So you use the internal RFinder radio app to activate the internal hotspot app, which is using the 4G connection on the device to connect to whatever server you told the, app, the hotspot to connect to. So it's got its own built-in hotspot. So you'll be able to walk down the street in a public park or a public place outside of your Wi-Fi, outside of your home area with an app and a radio in the device that's connected to the DMR network at all times through the 4G connection. That's pretty slick. That's pretty slick. I, I, I'm going to look forward to, uh, to testing that out when, uh, when that's finally available. And you will see that on this channel too. Come find Bob at our finder and I will be at his booth at Orlando Hamcation. Okay. I'm going to post this video right before Orlando Hamcation. I'm doing that on purpose because come to the booth, see the radio. You can see some demos. You can play some orders if you're interested. Um, he was wanting to have some devices available for sale so that you can just carry and go, buy it and go. Um, the Chinese New Year kind of put a damper on that because they will have just gotten back from their, from their two-week-long Chinese New Year by the time Hamcation gets here. So I don't know if he's going to be able to have any devices with him or not. We'll see. Um, but come find us in Orlando. Orlando Hamcation is February 7th and 8th or whatever that Friday and Saturday is. Yeah, that's right. Friday and Saturday, February 7th and 8th. I was right. <laughs> Come see us at Orlando Hamcation. I'll be there at the booth with Bob talking about the R-Finder device. Let me know in your comments below if you've got one of these. They have started shipping. If you if you go to R-Finder shop, you can find that device. Uh, a link will be in the description below. Let me know in your comments what you think. If you've got one, what you think about it, what features you would like to see upcoming next, and what videos you would like to see next on this channel with this device 73. Catch you next time.